This year marks the 35th anniversary of Ninja Gaiden, one of the best and most enduring action franchises of all time. It all started as an arcade beat-em-up back in 1988, before eventually getting fleshed out as a series of cinematic action games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This was then followed by a 3D reboot in the mid-2000s, once again raising the bar for character-driven action games and ninja titles in general. To help celebrate 35 years of Ryu Hayabusa and his many adventures, I wanted to see what Electronic Gaming Monthly Magazine said about this series back in the day. Now, in case you're wondering, EGM reviewed a total of 10 Ninja Gaiden games. This includes most of the sequels, the reboots, the side quests, and even a classic game compilation. Unfortunately, they did not get a chance to review the original Ninja Gaiden on the Nintendo Entertainment System, Ninja Gaiden Shadow on the Game Boy, or some of the later installments such as 2012's Ninja Gaiden 3 and the terrible Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. What we're going to do today is count down the best and worst Ninja Gaiden games using Electronic Gaming Monthly's own words and scores. There's no editorializing here, we're simply going to focus on what the critics said back when these games first came out. So go grab your stash of throw-in stars and prepare to be annoyed by that damn bird that keeps knocking you off of that cliff, because this is another silent but deadly episode of EGM Ranks Ninja Gaiden. Like a ghost in the moonlight. The ninja warrior stalks his prey. Unseen, unheard, and unnoticed. Mission accomplished. The final battle begins. Ninja Gaiden for Nintendo from Tecmo. Coming soon, more hard to beat action. Tecmo Bad News Baseball. Up first, at number 10, is Ninja Gaiden 3 The Ancient Ship of Doom on Lynx. How's this for a surprise? Ninja Gaiden 3 is a decent translation from the popular series. The play control is very good with precise movements, the graphics are simply brilliant on the Lynx's great screen, there are lots of hidden surprises to find and the magic really helps out in tight situations. But alas, the characters are microscopic, making the game almost a chore to play. A rare gem, but a bit tarnished. Number 9, Ninja Gaiden on Game Gear. This game has an awkward look and style that reminds me more of Strider than Ninja Gaiden. That point aside, Ninja Gaiden on the Game Gear is a nice addition to the portable's growing list of action carts but it still comes up short on gameplay and, in some areas, graphics. Number 8, Ninja Gaiden Trilogy on Super Nintendo. Okay, the classic Nintendo Entertainment System game of Ninja Gaiden does bring back some fun memories, but I really wish they had reworked the game rather than a straight port. Unlike the Mega Man series, the games seem virtually unchanged in both graphics and sound. If you're into nostalgia, this might be a fun game, but otherwise, it's a little weak for today's times. Still, fans of the series can't deny the addictive nature and the pure value of getting three games for the price of one. Number 7, Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Xbox 360. When Tecmo's Ninja Gaiden erupted onto the original Xbox four years ago, it completely galvanized the staid character action genre with its immensely demanding gameplay and staggeringly beautiful visuals. Now, a true sequel arrives in an attempt to unseat Capcom's Devil May Cry 4 as the lord of the stylish swordplay pantheon. Unfortunately, don't expect the familiar feeling Ninja Gaiden 2 to have as powerful an impact as its predecessor. If Devil May Cry 4 lets you switch between combat styles while slicing baddies in real time, why does Ninja Gaiden 2 still pause the on-screen action? While the gameplay still clearly ranks among the best in the business, other aspects are beginning to feel dated. Number 6, Ninja Gaiden on Lynx. Nice job, dudes! The Ninja Gaiden coin-op has never looked better. 
Well, maybe a little. Anyway, this is still a marvelous job done, bringing home one of the most popular action games of all time. How they got it all into a little Atari Lynx card is beyond me. Keep them coming. Before we go to break, I first want to point out this funny Ninja Gaiden moment that you can only find in Electronic Gaming Monthly. All the way back in issue 12, the EGM editors created a full four-page spread calling Ninja Gaiden 2 the Dark Sword of Chaos the Game of the Month. But tucked away at the very end of that layout was this completely out of place side panel where Rock's hottest new band Anthrax was invited to take Ninja Gaiden on in a private showing by Tecmo's graphic artist Jason Magnus. There are no quotes from the band and the two images are nearly identical revealing almost no useful information. It's also a bit of an oddity, as EGM didn't spend a whole lot of time chasing down celebrities, especially in the early years. And you know what? Maybe that's for the best, because what we get here doesn't even scratch the surface of what could have been a really cool interview with the band about Ninja Gaiden and just gaming in general. No matter if you're a fan of Ninja Gaiden or Anthrax, this blurb is the very definition of disappointing. Talk about a missed opportunity. Out of the darkness, the bright spirit of the Nuken reborn. Ninja Nukenden from Tecmo. Just when you had given up all hope, a ninja saves you from the evil Jackie O. More realistic than any other TV game, you're right in the action, fighting to the death. Coming soon from Tecmo, Ninja Nukenden, incredible game software for Famicom. And we're back with number 5, Ninja Gaiden 3 The Ancient Ship of Doom on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now this is a sequel! All of the classic power-ups and combat skills of the Ninja Master of the 8-Bit Market have still been retained. An all-new novelistic plot has been added, along with new cinema displays as well. Everything from the bosses to the backgrounds are truly stupendous! Number 4, Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword on the Nintendo DS. I agree that it's an impressive accomplishment that Dragon Sword makes the translation with most of its finely tuned ninja luster intact. It's easy to appreciate the speedy, satisfying touchscreen combat, even if it's disappointing to see so much recycling after the novelty wears off. But while the basic mechanics are aces, I found all the other touchscreen functionality, like using the magic and solving puzzles, to be stupidly simplistic. It's fun while it lasts though, particularly the boss battles, and will hopefully pave the way for more original DS action. Number 3, Ninja Gaiden Sigma on PlayStation 3. Even with those strange visual miscues, Sigma looks significantly better than both of the Xbox installments. But it's the brilliant gameplay that keeps Ryu at the top of the action crowd. The combat is extremely fast and fluid, and the formidable enemies force you to fight smarter. As far as the new stuff goes though, I'm not impressed. The Rachel sections feel like an afterthought, and the pointless tilt controls shaking the joypad to boost magic attacks makes me wonder why they even bothered. Number 2, Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Probably the best sequel ever made with near-perfect graphics, challenging gameplay, and intermissions that entice you to go just one round further. Other than the difficult gameplay and the higher levels, Ninja Gaiden 2 is as good as action games can get. And finally, Electronic Gaming Monthly's number one Ninja Gaiden game, Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox. One who is a warrior, says the old proverb, must keep constantly in mind by day and by night that he has to die. Ninja Gaiden doesn't argue. Your enemies will not stand by as you leisurely choreograph combos. Allow them the slightest opening and prepare to be skewered. 
Make no mistake, slipping your blade between one's ribs, sticking shurikens into the skull of another, and dealing and dodging death several times a second, you will cross swords in the most electrifying combat this side of Soul Calibur, because your survival depends upon it. Quicksilver pacing, knuckle tension, and spit-shined effects put Gaiden among the most remarkable action games ever made, but it's every bit as hardcore. Even for the warrior with unflinching focus and hair-trigger reflexes, the way is found in frequent deaths. Action game of all time, Ninja Gaiden. Ready to for the Unleash your inner ninja. Oh, I'll take a pound of that. Huh? Xbox is good to play together. Hey, thanks for watching me talk about all these Ninja Gaiden reviews. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we have a whole playlist where EGM ranks Castlevania, Contra. Resident Evil, Sonic the Hedgehog, Jurassic Park, Tomb Raider, and more! I recommend you go check them out. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite Ninja Gaiden game? You know, for as much as I loved that original Xbox reboot, gotta say that I was the most blown away by the original NES game. Although the story's a little clunky by today's standards, I couldn't believe how many cinemas that they packed into that little game. I was really affected emotionally. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with some review cleanup as well as a look at that Breakers compilation. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.